For a reminder, let's talk about how these code reviews kind of work. We've got a little game on top of it, okay? Uh, every single time that we do a code review, I allow all of you lovely folks in the audience to vote hire or fire for the code that we're looking at. We're reviewing the code, not a reflection of the person, just the code as it exists in its current state. And if at the end of the review, our reviewee has 80% higher votes, they get to list me personally as a reference on their resume. I will send them my name, my job title, where I work, all of these things. They can list me as a reference on their resume. If need be, I'll write them a letter of recommendation, all that stuff, okay? So that's, that's the kind of game on top of this. Here is our project. I'm gonna give you a little read through. Hey Brad, I'm just getting started with GitHub and still figuring things out. I've been into making Discord bots, but Valobot is kind of my first real project here. I branched out beyond just using Discord Pi. It feels great to learn something new. I'd really appreciate it if you could look, take a look at my code, give me some feedback on how I could improve, and maybe share some tips to help me stay motivated to keep building cool stuff like this. Thank you. Great, great project. I love Discord bots. Already off the bat, I'm going to say from like a like raw hiring perspective, love the repo, Okay. Like, this is just aesthetic. It's just aesthetic. So I already, like, the README makes a positive impression on me from, like, a if I were a hiring manager, I'm not. So maybe I should say if I were an engineer that were looking at this because I had to interview you later in the week, I would be like, okay, this person really cares about their projects. Click to show images. Awesome. Really thorough. The bot looks like useful too. I like this. I like your little synopsis things. I like that you have GIFs. The repo already is looking really good. Wait, how did you do this? By the way, you can change your vote at any time. Uh, I probably forgot that in the spiel, but you can change your vote at any time. So vote as we go. Let's head into Valo Info. Okay. Hard-coded API. Hard-coded API stuff. Um, kind of nitpicky, but I would certainly put at the very least this base URL into a constant, either at the top of this file, in a constants file, which could fall under your config.py, things like that. Again, so I'm seeing a lot of duplication here in terms of like headers, right? Like I get that you're only slapping one header on, but could be nice to just have a constant. If you find yourself typing the same thing over and over again, or if you're like, oh, let me just grab that snippet from up here. I think that's like an indication that there is somewhere that you can pull out a constant or like create a method or something like this that you would instead call. You start a new session with every request. I'm not super familiar with AIO, HTTP, but I would think that you could start a session up with your bot and then reuse that session. Here's what I'm figuring is that you would turn this into some like Valo info class and that Valo info class is just going to have on it some niceties like your headers constant and your base URL or your session. And I think this tiny change is going to clean up your code just enough where like, look, it's a small project. This isn't like ugly code. You know what I'm saying? It's just this is how I would write it, and this is probably how you'd see a lot of people write it. Let's give one last minute here for votes. I try to do that. I try to let the people... Oh my god, our final hire vote at the last second just clushed up to get into the camp for resume reference material. That is so good. I need to set a reminder. Remind me about reference when two hours boom okay great let's move on to our next project let's grab dm zeros currency converter first of all love the styling love the styling this is sick we're getting like we're on a good readme streak right now this is good currency converter currency converter cli program written in go with natural language interpretation You've piqued my interest. What does that mean? Okay. So the idea is like... Is this AI? It's not AI. Okay, this is interesting. Look, it's pretty good. 
I think my main concern is that if you don't know the rules, you might be a little surprised. I am terrified to open this file, but we have to open this file. Initializes at zero. Does anyone else agree with me? I feel like this is way harder than just going var i equals zero. Let's check out your how you hit the API and stuff. I just was looking to make sure that there weren't crazy like hard-coded phrases. You know what I mean? Yeah, just a bunch of weird formatting stuff. That's actually very surprising. That's what's standing out the most. We always hit the API. Do you check the cache before this? I might expect to see here either nothing about the cache or I would expect to see if it's in the cache, then we return that. Otherwise, we make the request. I think you can have it two ways and you're sitting in the middle right now. You either have it be API layer and cache or you can have it be We'll make these blue to signify API layer and cache. And then we'll call this like the caller. And so I think you can either have it where like you've got the caller checks the cache, the caller checks the API, and then there is no link between these two things whatsoever. So right now you update the cache in this API layer. I think you either do this where then it's up to the caller to update the cache or you encapsulate the cache inside of the API layer and your caller just calls the API layer and it's all built in. It would be nice to see you add a feature to be able to forcibly update the cache at any point. Then you would just provide some sort of like flag that's like dash or like not flag, like a command line, like an argument to the param or call a different function that's like force update or something like that. Um, I think this would be, in my mind, the two the two types of patterns I would expect to see. We'll take a look at the main real quick. I'm not sure how I feel about what I assume to be all of your structs being defined just at the top of main. Might make sense for these to live closer to the things that like own that data. So for example, I saw that latest gets returned by your API. Maybe that goes in there. See now, okay, get cache timestamp, I would expect to exist inside of the cache functions as opposed to inside of main. It's just about where you put your code. But again, think about it like logical groupings. This is a function on your cache. It should probably exist there. You read it for the timestamp and then you read it for the actual data. I thought that we were just reading like, because it's a file, I thought we were just checking when the file got updated or like when the file was last edited. But yeah, I think having to read the data in twice also Probably a little suboptimal. We'll go two minutes to vote on this. If you haven't voted already, vote. We are close. Oh, and I forgot to give the roll to the last person. If they don't get to 80%, but they still get hired, they get a roll in my Discord that labels them as hiring material. All right. Are they going to survive the last 34 seconds, 33 seconds in this resume threshold? We are in the resume reference zone. Let's stop those votes. So that you can just revel in the glory of that 80% threshold, baby. You did it. Congratulations. Thanks for bringing the code by. I really appreciate it. Our final entrant from before, Maple Thunder. Let's read. I hacked this app together to help with a problem I had and also to practice React in my spare time about two years ago so it's not pretty. The app helps track the depth of a football, soccer, Team in the different positions. Where do we start with? I always like to see what people consider to be components. Box, cancel button, clear button, custom select, delete form, depth chart, footer, header, link button, list item, modal, player form, sidebar, submit button. All look great. App.tsx being in here, I feel like it's maybe a little meme, but generally looks great. We use styled components. So this is what we used at Amazon when I worked there, like on the team that I worked on. And at the time I was like, dude, this is sick. I love this. And then like I learned about Tailwind and now I'm like, Tailwind's kind of the wave. I know you said this is two years old. I don't know if Tailwind was even out yet, but I know that you talked about, you know, things that you could maybe improve. Maybe, maybe give Tailwind a whirl. Let's take a look at the store. Okay. We got a lot of types in here. We got a lot of types in here. 
Oh, it's just types. Okay. I feel like there's this idea of like locality of code. What do people call it? I think they normally call it locality of behavior, but I kind of want to talk about it in this light anyway. This structure, I feel like to me, is like I'm going to group code by the type of code. And so you have like, you know, if we really zoom in, you've got all of your types in one spot. And then you've got like, let's say util functions in another spot. Um, things like this. And you're kind of grouping this way. I'm generally partial to the idea of like locality of use, I guess I'll call it. Where in my head, you've got like a silo of, let's say like that idea of boxes. And I would maybe put all of the types for boxes inside of something that's close to that all of the functions for boxes inside something that's close to that, all of the like components and eh, not the components components. I get generally go somewhere else, but you get this idea of like, I like to group it more in this, I guess I'll call it like vertical pillars of you've got like boxes and then maybe you've got stuff that's specific to players. Right. So then it's like, as these things as I'm like trying to understand about these definitions, it's all very close together. Let's take a look at some of this other stuff. Player reducer again. This fact that this is under context for reducer, but then the type is defined in store types. This all feels odd to me. I think one of the biggest issues I've seen is putting props into a type file, not within the component. Yeah, okay. Uh, never mind. I didn't even notice that the first time through. This whole idea, I think, is localization around trying to keep where you define things very close to where they are used. I know, yeah, I know that we're seeing a pretty harsh bar right now. I'm not going to lie. Pretty harsh bar. If I get over 80% fire, do I get an anti-reference? I personally call in to your jobs <laughs> and I go, don't hire this guy. No, I get it. Like we all learn stuff. I'm going to stop the voting here. Unfortunately, we've got a little bit of a fire here today, but you know, that's okay. That's okay. Because it's a live and learn type situation. Live and learn type situation. Boom. Stop the votes. All good. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.